Welcome back to the Myth Series in Depth. This mission starts Act 4, The Leveler. Now that we have the Trow dealt with, we are ready to take the battle straight to Moagim. First though, Balal the Watcher stands in our way. This mission occurs 11 months after the previous mission. On his triumphant return, Connacht the Wolf had become Grand General of the armies of the Cath Bruig, the conqueror of the Macridia and the destroyer of the Trow. To the people, Connacht became a god given flesh. The Northmen, whom he had saved from the bitter nights of winter, became his devoted followers, pledging their lives to his name. Where he went, their swords followed. As the frosts of winter once again receded into warmer skies, the mighty walls of Landgrafen stood untouched by the hands of the dark. Grand General Connacht assembled the whole of the Cathbruic armies. He said that he planned to lead the Landgrafen army into the west to hunt down Moagam and the remnants of his army, that until his evil was snuffed from the world, the Cathbruic would never know peace. On the eve of the army's departure from the city's gates, Connacht was summoned by the Emperor. He told Connacht that he wished to personally lead the army of Landgrafen into battle. Connacht, surprised at the Emperor's sudden change of mind, asked if his idea was a sound one. Majaran stated that the bidding of the Emperor would be followed. Before Connacht could rebuke the advisor, Emperor Leotrim gently asked Connacht if he would let an old man lead his people to their greatest glory. Connacht could not bring himself to refuse his wishes. And so the host of Landgrafen marched from the city gates in high spirits. Not only were they commanded by the Grand General Connacht, but they were led by the Emperor himself. After merely a few days' travel, the mirth of the troops faded as they witnessed the destruction brought upon the Downs. What was once green farmland was now scarred and blackened lands, flattened by the weight of battling armies. Yet, no bodies could be found. After many weeks of travel, they had entered the remains of Hellsford. It was then that they heard the thunder of footfalls and knew they had found the enemy. Connacht returns to Lankerfin once again as a hero. If there was anyone with any doubt in his abilities, they are practically gone by now. Anyone who has the courage to face the Trow deserves respect, much less someone who actually returns victorious. The journal says that he had saved the northern men so that they will join him. I am not sure if they are referring to him saving them by defeating the Trow or the Macridia. The reason it seems odd to me is that I primarily consider them being saved by Damas and Ravana in the refugee mission, but whatever. Although Lankerfen was safe within its walls, there would be no peace within the Cathbrook Empire until Moagim was dealt with. There must be a lot of farmland within the walls of Lankerfen that allow the people who live there to continue to survive. Without farmland, there is no way that the people who live there would have made it through 14 long years that have passed since Connacht's first battle at Yersgrad. Emperor Leotrim wishes to personally lead the forces of Lankrafen into battle along with Connacht. Majarin, the imperial advisor, seems to be encouraging him to go, which is rather odd. Why would the advisor want the emperor to go into battle when there is already Connacht to lead the troops? It is not like the Emperor will be very helpful. Regardless, Connacht decides to allow him to come since he doesn't have the heart to tell him no. Keep in mind though, the last time we left to battle the Trow, the Emperor seemed very weak and Majarin was basically calling the shots. Things could go very poorly taking along an Emperor who is becoming very frail, but Connacht and the forces will help keep him safe. The forces of Lankerfin marched on to find Moagim. The downs and surrounding land was just, just a shadow of what it once was, giving testimony to the destruction of Moagim and the Watcher. Where exactly the ruins of Hellsfort is, we do not know. It is located somewhere within the downs, likely between Lankerfin and Norn Pass on the map, 
since that is where we will be going on the next mission. In this mission we'll be facing Balal the Watcher. In this mission, Balal wields a scimitar for close combat if it comes to that. As you would expect from the title of this mission though, his primary strength is his dream magic. His first dream spell is Unlife Dream, which allows him to bring the dead to life. In game, this dream spell works very similar to the Pack Mage mission where we fought against the undead around the Pack Mage without any armor or weapons. This spell isn't much of a threat to us, but it does provide a meat shield around him that can make it more difficult to approach him. His second dream spell is the Whisper Dream. With the name Whisper Dream, you would think it would work similar to Shiver Spell in Bungie's Myth, but it actually looks quite a bit different. This Whisper Dream spell will send several glowing balls towards his enemies that are completely harmless at first. However, once they hit their target, they will cause their earth to erupt and distort, completely obliterating any unit who was at the location of the impact. As long as your units keep moving, they are fast enough to avoid this attack, but it does make it difficult to approach him without some serious micromanagement. The Watcher does have a couple of new flavor texts in Myth 3 that tell of his discovery of the Unlife Dream and his excitement to bring the dead to life to rule the world of Myth. Still wet from the frigid waters of Sianwan, Balal moved rapidly to find a fresh corpse for his experiment. Slain by the blade, Balal entuned the chance of his newly discovered dream over the cooling body. Slowly the arms began twitching and the corpse's white eyes opened to stare into the sky. Balal let a shriek of ecstasy into the heavens. A world with a corrupt dream roam, where the torn and bloodied shapes shuffle in their mindlessness. A world where he and he alone would command, ruling over a world of fetid decay. Thus was the dream of Balal the Watcher. Now let's jump to the mission and I will show you how to make a swift end to the Watcher. Defeat the Watcher and his undead army. So we, right away we're going to grab yeah. these units and run up here. Over here. So yeah. you see right where the satchels are we get a, um extra dwarf. Um, and if... Okay, I'm just setting my hotkeys. Okay, and then on the north and south... You can see some of our units are getting destroyed by some of Balal's armies. And we're going to save this real quick right here as soon as we get that reinforcement because, you know, your dwarf can tend to dud right here. And if he does, it's really hard to save these him. There we go. Okay, and then we're just... We got quite a bit of heals, so we could afford to like just engage those guys. And then right away, we're going to get a bunch of goals from the north, so we're just going to pass forward and face them real quick. This group kind of just patrols the north and south. This two, I mean, the group that destroyed the group in the south just kind of goes back and forth, east, west, on the south, and the group that destroyed the group on the north kind of goes, you know, east and west on the north. And I'm going to get attacked by some goals and some solace to the north, but I don't see them yet. Oh, there they are. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go heal this dwarf real quick. And then we're just gonna send our guys at the Solus because. Because we got heals. So there's no point in like trying to micromanage this with the. Their ability to find the guy to heal is kind of bad. <laughs> Alright, we got a nice little ridge here that we're going to abuse to kill some enemies. As long as you stay close to the ridge. It's kind of towards the south. I mean, it's toward, kind of towards the middle of the map, but it's somewhat towards the south. So as long as you stay, you know, kind of somewhat south, you'll be fine. So these... These guys trying to kind of try to encircle you, all these thrall and forgotten. So we're just going to get their attention and then we're going to run back and let them, you know, try to come up this hill. And they are not going to be able to do it very easy. I'm just gonna kill this fallen. And I'm gonna retrieve my berserks, and my doors will take care of the thrall. Easy peasy. Nah, I might as well just take him out with my, with my melee at this point. New units received. So now we get Myrdred and a few more warriors over here. And there's Balal the Watcher in the corner, so... Yeah. Um, we gotta face a few more, yeah. uh... A few more, uh, fallen. Yes, my liege. Hold on, I'm healing my units. And then we're gonna go fetch, we're gonna go fetch these units. Over here. Kinda come to this hill right me. here, a little bit to the west, I'm and we'll draw me. some more, the rest of the Forgotten. Over here. And some more whites will come after them. Here they come. Nothing we can't handle. Kind of coming in a nice two separate groups. Die, fool. Get out of the way. Make a hole. We kind of got unlucky that they came like simultaneously. Dang it, archers. Here comes some more. Over here. We do have some dispersal dreams where we're saving it to make the watcher part easier. Die, fools. Attack. Okay, now we just got whites to deal with. Yeah. Now we're just gonna face away, let him come, and then shoot him. That way, you don't gotta bother with these whites. Oh, 
Oh, these whites are stuck or something. Yep. Over here. Okay, now we just have the watcher to deal with. Let's take all our units, Over come here. up here. Yeah. Let's go. And we're gonna park them on Over this here. hill right up here, which is like on looking the watcher. Yeah. Over here. Right up here. Let's go. Okay, and then we're gonna hot key our units. So we got the dwarves on one number, one berserk on another, and then the deceiver on another. Okay, let's save it real quick. And then I got a little trick for the de for the watcher. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dodge him, you know, with my berserk, kill all these guys with Mirdred's dispersal dream spells, run my dwarves up, lay a little satchel trap, and then lead the watcher over the satchel trap and blow it up with the dwarves and then you know I can kind of um, I'm if there's if he has any way. health le any health left I can finish him up with uh, a few more bottles Mildred also has his ability to stun him which I could do as a last resort too I suppose Okay. He's shooting him again, I can tell because of his animation. Over here. On me way. I'm moving. Over here. He got my satchels down. I'm moving. Now I just need I'm him moving. to chase my berserk. On me way. Which looks like he might be. On me way. Is he? Yeah, he is. On me way. So we want to lead him right over the satchel trap. So I'm has. I'm kind of trying to time it perfect. Oh no, he's I'm gonna moving. shoot him again. Yeah. I'm moving. On me way. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. So he hit my guy a little bit. On me way. Over Come here. on, chase my yeah. berserk. You can do it. He's he I'm he'll moving. like one shot my berserk yeah. right now. So. Uh, On me way. Uh, I think maybe if I um. Like I think I might be coming too far away from like his little like, you know, his little like yeah. spot. He likes to be near his I'm base, moving. so that might be why he, where he starts. That might be why he um isn't wanting to chase me. I want to go with that and I'm see moving. if that works. I'm moving. On me way. Apparently got stunned and hit from that. That's ridiculous. On me way. Yeah. Don't go. Don't walk Over into here. it, dumbass. <laughs> I'm the one telling him to walk into it, though. 
On me way. Okay, we're gonna let the meter just melee this last guy. On me way. Get him, Mirdred. Over here. Yeah. I'm moving. Okay, let's lay the bombs like right here. Yeah. Okay, then we're gonna lead him right back over these bombs. Over here. We gotta get like him in a perfect line to run I'm right moving. over the middle of the bomb. I'm there we go. Way. And then we're gonna time it so he will blow up right on the bombs. Uh, you. How do you have such power? Too close. Yeah. <laughs> you hear that, dwarves? Yeah. You have too much power. The dream duel between Myrdred and Bilal had ended in the Watcher's defeat. Mulligan, having his forces smashed by the Cathbruic army, fled into the west. Well, hope you guys like that ending. Try to make it kind of interesting, but... The doors kicked ass, and... But lots of melee, especially with the heals from the um, Huron Guards makes this mission like way easier, so. The windscreen shows Mildred standing on top of what looks like the only patch of grass that was not destroyed during his battle with the Watcher. This image clearly drew inspiration from an image in the Tales from Myth comic that shows the aftermath of the dream duel between Robokin and Shiver. With Mildred's victory over the Watcher, Moogim has no choice but to flee from the Lankerfin army. Does Moogim have another trick up his sleeve for us? The lost screen shows the Watcher holding Mirdred up as he prepares to plunge his scimitar through Mirdred's neck. With the Watcher's sickening mind, he doesn't merely kill him but instead wants to have some fun with him first. With the fall of the Cathbrook army, there won't be much left to defend Lankerfin so it will be just a matter of time before Moogim sacks the great city. Well that is it for this mission. The next mission is Fall of the Crown, and the title of the mission speaks for itself. See you then.